People want to know, like, well, Rolo, what can I do to fight back against that? How do I get masculine authority back? You call that shit out immediately. That's that's one. You don't use their language. You don't use that. You use the you now. If you want to, you want to actually do something. Now, here's the prescription. You know, Rolo Tomas is going to give you. A, here it is, a prescription. You hear that? You do not use the language of emotion. You use the language of reason. And that was the conflict between myself and Myron and this girl, this French Canadian girl. Where she was proven wrong, provably wrong. And you know what she defaulted to? She defaults to, well, that's your opinion and that's my opinion and we can agree to disagree, blah, blah, blah. No, no, we can't because you're wrong. Because my priority in this show, my show, and then anytime I go on Fresh and Fit, and certainly I, I would, I think Myron would agree with me, is that we're not looking for what feels good. And I'll, I'll show you a little clip here from uh, our good friend, Michaela Peterson here a little while. I'm not trying to shit on her. It's not her. I want to focus on. It's the guy she's interviewing in this, but it's all about, Oh, you know, I, you make people feel bad. Like she's not talking to me. She's talking to this guy. Right. And you know, inadvertently he's trying to be as polite and as courteous as he can be in this whole thing, but she defaults to appeals to emotion because that's the only language she speaks. And the French Canadian girl that was on fresh and fit, that's all she understands. She doesn't understand any other language. Women rarely understand or learn the language of rationality and reason and empiricism. They only speak emotional ease. And I don't mean woman ease. I mean, like they only defer and default to emotional appeals. So if they, they, when a woman can't be right, as I said before, it's usually it's like, Oh, who hurt you? They're trying to win the argument by reframing the argument to emotional conditions. So you, uh, an emotionalist can't win a rational argument with emotion and vice versa. So a guy who's like telling you deductive reasoning, they'll say, well, you know, here's, here it is black and white. This is, this is the, here's the stats. Here's the numbers. Here it is. You know, uh, it's, it's like the laws of physics and here's, here's, here, here it is laid out for you. And th it's like, uh, oh, well, that's your truth. Not my truth. That's when we hear that. Oh, well, I'm living my truth. No, there is the truth. And then there is your interpretation of that. And if you think you are living according to your interpretation of that, well, then we can have that discussion. But the fact remains is that there is no, you know, agree to disagree. Oh, that's just your opinion. No, those are the facts. And your opinion is you can't deal with those. And again, that's that cognitive dissonance there. And when you bring up that topic and when you like have that discussion and it doesn't have to, I, I of course it's e women are easy to certainly young women are easy to point this out. Guys do this too. Like the guys who are like really sort of aligning with this blue pill feminization uh, you know, that they've been acculturated and raised and thinking, well, the more I identify with women, then the more they're going to like me, they'll have the same response. Like guy woke guys, <laughs> Ethan Klein uh, woke guys will will proceed from an emotionalist basis and as i've said before you have sort of these moral absolutists and these moral relativists and you've got these empirical absolutists and empirical relativists but it's it's a conversation of the language of emotion and the language of reason and when their language of reason is trying to win a debate it presumes that the emotionalist that they're debating has the same goal of coming to what is true and what is not what is a fact and what is not? What is true and what is false? The emotionalist, the believer, that side, the blue pill really thinking is, is this, is this right or is this wrong? Is this my, uh, is this my truth or is this the truth? That's, that's a really fundamental difference. So when women default to, oh, it's all about love, that's a reframe because they can't win a rational empirical argument where the goal of that argument is coming to whether it's true or it's false. Now, believers who it's all about love, that's interpreting. Because remember that emotion is not about, uh, it's not learning, it's not rationality, it's how I felt about something. And it's what was the emotional provocation? What is my body, How what's the emotional trigger that's I don't know, pumping adrenaline into my body or make oxytocin into my body or whatever, you know, chemical cocktail into my body. Remember, emo instinct, emotion, and reason are not magic. They are, they are interpretive human processes. It's how we interpret information. 
But the problem is we prioritize emotion above everything else. And so that's how you get love justifies everything. So if, it, if I'm, if I'm right about an argument from an empirical perspective and someone says, well, that ain't love that I lose the argument because the goal of the argument isn't about what's true and false. It's about what's love and what's not, what makes me feel good and what doesn't. So I'm Michaela always starts with this. Oh, well, you know, I really, yeah, he's right about stuff, but it seems very angry. No, it sounds angry to you because I'm speaking the language of rationality and reason. And she's speaking the language of emotion. Her point in being in that argument in the first place, argument, debate, whatever it is, the goal of the debate is to walk away with a good feeling. That's not, I ain't nice. I ain't nice. I'll go, I'll be happy to go in there and, and, and piss you off and give me, you can walk away with a bad feeling, but you know what you won't walk away with? You won't be uneducated. You'll walk away with something new in your head. And that's the goal of, that's my goal when I walk into that arena. Educate. Is this true or is this false? Now, does that mean I think that emotions are, are, aren't necessary? No, absolutely not. I'm an artist, man. I, I love my dog. I love my kids. I love my, I love you guys, man. I love my thousand sons, but I will, I'm, I, I love you enough to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, and sometimes the truth is tough, man. The truth will set you free, but it doesn't make it easier to swallow. It doesn't make it easier to accept. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to come. It has liabilities and responsibilities come with the truth. And that's the problem. Sometimes they don't feel good. Fish or jacuzzi, watching old videos with Pat Campbell. God, don't know. Wait, wait, wait. For Pat. There you go. Yes, Pat Campbell. God with his immortal soul. If there's any one person in heaven right now that I truly believe is in Valhalla, it's Pat Campbell. Um, Red Pill 101, lots of great effectively uh, and effectively essays of rational male. Basically, be a man. Yeah. I miss Pat. I miss Pat a lot. I will miss Pat. I will commemorate his, it was October 20th is when he passed away. I will definitely have a special show for him that day. Thank you, Ethan. Um, Al Cooper, congrats on the new book. Heard your first comments on mystery and now have studied his material. Any comments on Ross Jeffries material? Thank you. Um, Ross, I have, I've actually quoted Ross Jeffries on a few occasions where uh, children with dynamite. That's I, I, uh, I plagiarized that from Ross Jeffries. No. That was actually a quote. Um, I think in the, I think it was in the game. I've met Ross Jeffries on two occasions. Uh, Ross seems like I understand. He's like, he's like, you want to talk about Roll Tomasi being the old guard. Ross has been around long before the seduction community was around. Uh, Ross was big on uh, neurolinguistic programming, which was, you know, saying the right things or like, you know, couching certain terms or in sentences. If you look up NLP, neurolinguistic, ah, because people are going to screw this up. Neurolinguistic programming. Okay. Cuttlefish. C U T T L E F I S H, not cuddlefish, cuttlefish, neuro linguistic programming. Look that up. That's Ross Jeffries. I, I like Ross Jeffries' old stuff. I think uh, kind of some of his newer stuff is like, I don't know if he, I don't, I haven't heard from him in a long time. I don't think bad to say about the guy. I just, I don't think I've seen anything from him in a 